Adela Jones! Uh, I'd like to um, start my second half for you with a, a short poem which was deter um, inspired by the gender determined role conflict between Jean Paul Sartre and Simone de Beauvoir set against the backdrop of the French existentialist movement and the decline in global capitalism. It's untitled. <laughs> Jean-Paul Sartre was a great French thinker. He loved philosophising, but he was also a heavy drinker and prone to womanising. Yes, old JP had many sins. He often left size sobbing, while she typed up the mandarins, it was out, illicit nobby. <laughs> when Simone penned that the second sex, that seminal feminist tone, Jean-Paul took up with his ex and was very seldom home. What good's an existentialist when he wants some TLC? It's just another bloke what's pissed. Bugger philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> This time, he's really gone too far, Simone thought. he have to go. She tracked him to a seedy bar and pointed her finger so. Chauvinist pig, you're in for a dig. You've had one too many. If you're going to carry on that way, then shack up with Jean Genet. <laughs> Hell is other people, so you're right. But to me, it's you, JP, you pile of shite. Yeah. <laughs> so as you can, uh, as you can tell from that, we've got a phone. Yeah, we've got a phone. I hope that's not you, Julian. I'll switch off. Uh, so, as you can tell from, from that little offering, I have got a serious interest in women's literature. Um, you probably know that I uh, did the feminist version of the well-known D.H. Lawrence novel, Lady Chatterley's Hoover. And, uh, I've just completed a translation of uh, Imelda Garcia Marcus to uh, 200 Years of Shopping. Um, so this next poem was inspired by a friend of mine's rather unusual response when I asked her which Jane Austen heroine she'd like to be, and it's called Pride and Prejudice. Which Bennett sister would you be? Placid Jane, lively Lizzie. My friend said, girl, I'll tell you this, when it comes to Pride and Prejudice, there's only one good role for me. Rich, bold, Arcy, Mr Darcy. I'd be him any day on his high stepping grey, riding into Derbyshire, independent, free from fear, with cutting a frightful dash with Pemberley and all that cash. No petticoats and big long knickers, bossy patrons, whinging vicars. I won't be some poor spinster bitch. Just give me bollocks and make me rich. <laughs> Now, I don't actually often do any serious poetry. <laughs> but uh, Patrick's given me this opportunity. And uh, I'd like to read um, something very beautiful by Dylan Thomas, which is called Clown in the Moon. My tears are like the quiet drift of petals from some magic rose, and all my grief flows from the rift of unremembered skies and snows. I think that if I touched the earth, it would crumble. It is so sad and beautiful, so tremulously like a dream. And this is one, something that I wrote for somebody close to me. It's called Strawberries and Cream. 
I dream of strawberries and cream, sharp beneath the sugar, sweeter on the tongue, cool against my skin like rain at Wimbledon. Smooth rose-tinted cream, delicious as a sin, a memory, a theme, a summer yet to come, a love affair begun. I know, you're not used to it, are you? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this last one is, um, well, sorry, no, it's not my last one, but the next one, I mean, is uh, something for all of you who live in fear of workplace drug testing. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> and it's called Whoever Said. Whoever said the acrid stench of marijuana has never stood in a ganja field at dawn watching the dainty green leaves reaching up to greet the morn. Pretty trembling green fronds welcoming the sun casting dappled shadows ready to give fun, sticky drops of mango scent rising in warm vapours. What a bloody pity I forgot to bring some papers. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's back on track now. <laughs> and uh, there's one last little poem for you, and I did, um, I did illustrate it. I did, just to sort of help you. Uh, it's a big handbag, it could take a while. <laughs> We don't about okay, we'll, we'll forget it. We'll forget my illustration. So this is called Happy Ethical Christmas. Holly berries in the snow, off to the shops I have to go. Bells jingle, reindeers fly, I don't know what to bloody buy. Bath salts, booze, books and candy, satin knickers to make men randy, comedy pants or comic CDs, socks that come up to your knees. Pots with herbs to grow from seed, lots of things you do not need. A thought of slippers or a house coat, a scented candle, a Chinese fan. But instead, I bought a nice fat goat for some poor paupers in Sudan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me and have a nice Christmas. More applause for Angela Jones. Um, it's gone quiet upstairs. Yeah, I was just about to go up and have a shower. I'll just go and have a quick word with him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it pitch? Oh, is it pitch?